Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, good evening, Facebook family, and welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guidance servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Pubba Brian Post. Happy Manic Monday, everyone. I hope this Daily Dose finds you in the best of health and good spirits. Nice, regulated, calm heart, calm mind, and good spirit. So tonight, I thought I would talk about perspective in the midst of the struggle and it's it's a topic i've talked about before but it is one that i feel is probably deserving of constant repetition because in some ways i feel like it is one of the biggest challenges that we as parents have in raising traumatized children, challenging children. Hello there, Mimi. Good to see you as always. And so the perspective, and I want to try to break it down to you. And, and you know, I spent a lot of time with families. I spent a lot of time with families in crisis. And I have been spending, I have spent time with families in crisis for the better part of 20, 24 years, 23 years now. Um, and I didn't realize this early in my career, it is very clear now that in the midst of the struggle, and, and this is going to sound familiar because I've been saying it more and more recently, but in the midst of the struggle, and this is when I also say severe behavior, it's in the midst of the severe, of the severe behavior that you have the greatest opportunity for a breakthrough. Because when a child is in the midst of severe behaviors, they are reacting from stories and experiences in their brain stem. Your brain stem is where your state level of memory is stored. Your state level of memory is where your personality traits are stored. So Bruce Perry always says that states become traits of your personality. So trauma stores itself in that state level of memory. The challenge with the state level of memory, yo, what's up, Pat O'Brien? Yes, this is really live. <laughs> the problem with the state level of memory is that it is vastly unconscious and it is one of the most difficult levels of the memory system to access. Well, scientists tell it's one of the most tell us it's one of the most difficult levels to access. And this is why cognitive behavioral therapy with traumatized children is woefully ineffective because there's the cognitive, there's the emotional, there's the motor, and then there's the state. The cognitive level of memory being the most easy level to access, it's the most conscious. Then you just flip flop that, the state level being the most unconscious. But the problem is that we typically try to address children and their trauma Hence, their state level of memory through the cognitive pathway, through trying to talk to them. But you, you can't access trauma through talking. Trauma has to be accessed through an emotional pathway. It is an emotional pathway. It, it strongly influences behavior manifestation. And a lot of times it is chaotic, it is disorganized, and it is disruptive. That's, what, that's how trauma gets stored in the state level of memory. So you have to understand, you don't have to understand, but I want to help you understand that from from think from talking about perspective in the midst of the struggle. A couple of things I want to help you to understand. Number 1, the chaos that is seemingly being manifested within your child and then projected outside of your child is coming from an internal state of chaos. It is coming from a neurological state of chaos. It's coming from an emotional state of chaos, a physical, a physical experience of chaos. You've heard me say time and time again that stress causes confused and distorted thinking and suppresses the short-term memory. 
Well, even deeper than just stress on a in, on in a moment to moment basis, stress causing confusion, distorted thinking, and suppressing the short term memory is that when stress activates the brainstem, when stress activates the brainstem and opens up the state level memory. Hey, miss you too, Georgia Phillips. Love you, girl. When stress activates the brainstem and the state level memory. Hey, Georgia Phillips, Pat O'Brien's on here. Hey, you guys should connect. Probably haven't talked in a while. Um, the thinking becomes even more confused and distorted and the short-term memory becomes even more suppressed. And then the reality becomes connected to the experience that's stored in the brainstem, the, the experience being associated with the trauma. This is just a this is a really recent scenario. Been going through it with a parent of a 16-year-old who has early trauma from conception to about three years of age. And uh definitely up to it was up to two years of age, has this early trauma. And so much of the chaos that is that is generated from this teenager, I know is coming from a pre-verbal place. It's coming from a when I say pre-verbal, I want you to understand this. Pre-verbal, pre-verbal means before there were words, before there were words available to describe the experience. So if there were no words available to describe the experience, the only thing that was there was emotion. The only thing that was there was energy. And so when you think about a child coming from early experiences of, of neglect and abuse and overwhelm, what's stored in their brainstem is abuse and neglect and overwhelm. It is chaos. So when these behaviors are man, these behavior patterns are being manifested from these children in the midst of this struggle, we have to hold the perspective that now in the midst, in this present day, they are actually, the behavior is actually being driven from an earlier traumatic experience. And that's why it looks so crazy. But the problem is when our children's trauma triggers our own stress and our own trauma, and then we get just as crazy as them. When that happens, the possibility for a breakthrough diminishes almost to a zero. It is almost impossible for parents to create breakthroughs and even have healing opportunities. I'm gonna, I'm gonna re, I wanna repeat that. When a child is stressed out and, and overwhelmed and then the adult who's caring for them is also stressed out and overwhelmed, the potential for the child to achieve healing drops to almost a zero. It is almost impossible. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but stress plus stress equals more stress. If a child is stressed out and the parent is coming at that child with a physiology of stress, it's just reinforcing the stress pattern. It's doing nothing to change the pattern. And that's why I'm saying it's almost impossible for a child to experience a breakthrough when their parents are stressed. Now, when the parent is able to, because some parents are able to appear regulated, but internally can be really stressed out and overwhelmed and can regress and can shut down and can freeze up or parents who walk on eggshells and I'm not not too long ago I talked about walking on eggshells is being stressed so that's sending the same physiology but when a parent can first see when you can see and this is always why I've been talking I've talked about the trauma lens for 15 years for 15 years I've probably talked about a pair of eyeglasses a pair of sunglasses with a with a hologram of a baby inside them so when you looked in when you look through the glasses you can see the baby inside the individual when a parent can see the baby inside of the behavior manifestation when a parent can see the behavior can see the baby in the midst of the behavior manif manifestation when I say ignore the ignore the behavior, don't ignore the child. What I'm saying is attend to the trauma. Attend to your understanding of that child. Attend to your understanding of the child's stress. Attend to the understanding of your child's fear, your child's overwhelm. Look at that. See that. And what that does to your amygdala is actually creates a different neural reaction. Your amygdala feels less threatened and it feels less stressed and left, less overwhelmed. So then what happens is you're actually creating a new vibration, a new energy, a new pattern is being, is being sent to your child. It's a, a new neurophysiologic pattern. It's being communicated to your child. When a parent is able to do that, and I've been watching this mom with the 16 year old and it's been 
difficult. I mean, it has been a really, really challenging situation. 16 year old female, well, I've, I've been watching mom and she's, she teeters because she starts to get tired and she's also got several other children she has to take care of. But she's working really hard to stay present with the 16 year old in the midst of this overwhelming verbal assault, emotional assault, physical threats, sometimes physical threats and, and aggressive behavior towards the other siblings and destruction of property. Mom's working really hard to be present and I'm watching her have breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough with this child. And it was just, it's been this series of days, probably like over two weeks of real struggle. And it just kind of all came to a head, I believe. I'm actually going to shoot mom a text as soon as I get off here with you guys. It came to a head last night. And I, I heard from mom early this morning about the, the remainder of the incident last night, but I haven't heard from her all today. So that in and of itself is pretty good. But I never, I never just determined because parents who grew up not being emotionally supported as children have a really hard time reaching out for emotional support as adults. So it's really important that I not take for granted that just because I don't hear from someone, they're doing well, because that's not always the case. But when a parent is able to maintain some semblance of regulation in the presence of the child's overwhelming experience, they create a new, they create a new pathway, they create a new experience. That new experience is actually planning a new experience in the brain. Bruce Perry always says that our brain always returns to the way the event was handled the last time. Now think about it. if that's true, and I, I'm, you guys, I talk about Bruce Perry all the time. I'm his biggest fan. If, if the brain always returns to the way the experience was handled the last time, then every time a parent is able to maintain regulation in the presence of a child's dysregulation, in the presence of a child's overwhelm, in the presence of a child's traumatic re-experiencing, because when they're a stressed out child is a regressed child is an acting out child. A stressed out child is a regressed child is an acting out child. A stressed out child is a regressed child is an acting out child. When the child is stressed out and they're regressed and they could go back very, very, very young and they're acting out from that place, when a parent is able to maintain regulation in the presence of that dysregulation, the, present, the parent is creating a new neurophysiologic feedback loop. They're literally creating a new experience for that child's brain, a new experience for that child's brain stem. And so the next time the child gets agitated at that level, they're going to first, they're going to first, their cortisol, their stress surge is first going to hit that, that last experience. Now that last experience is thin ice. It hasn't had, a, it hasn't had long enough to freeze and get solid and, and to, and to thicken. It hasn't had enough repetition. See, it's the repetition that starts not only freezing it from the top, but also freezing it from the bottom. And pretty soon you get this solid ice that when the cortisol surge hits it, it doesn't, it doesn't just collapse. It doesn't just collapse in the earlier trauma. So experience after experience after experience, when you are able, and you're not, al you're not always able to do it. You're not always able to do it, but when you can do it effectively, it is so effective to your child's brain. It makes an impact so fast. I've got another set of parents that are going through it with a teenager that they've recently brought into their home. I think he's 15 years old. They're going through it with him. And I guarantee you in six months, the child will be in a completely different place than he would have ever been than, has, than he's probably ever been in his entire life up until the last six months. Now, it's gonna be hell for them to get through these six months but if they can, if they can continue, even 50% of the time, handle these situations with regulation, as opposed to meeting them with dysregulation, it's going to start repairing that child's brain. It is a, it is a neurologic possibility. It, it, and it's almost impossible that it doesn't happen that way. I've, I've just seen it happen too often. It happens so fast. Parents who follow this model, who follow a love-based parenting model, they see their children get better rapidly. Not perfect. Not perfect because you've got children with, with, with sometimes years of pain. Not, 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 it doesn't happen overnight and the child's not perfect. But if you do it consistently, the brain starts to repair and you see it. 
You see it in your child's reaction times. You see it in the times when the child goes to bed. You see it in the times when the child doesn't get their way and, and, and normally they would have thrown a big a big episode. You might see it that you're, when your child is able to go for one hour, one hour without, without regressing into whining and tantruming and threats of violence. It could be one hour if you'll just measure it against the days before. You know, it's like a tantrum. How long does the tantrum last? How long does the, how long does the tantrum last when you start? And how long does it last three months later? And how long does it last six months later? And what you'll usually find is tantrums. What I find in my experience with families that I've worked with is tantrums go from two hours all the way down to five minutes. So that's how you know that it's not just behavior change, it's brain change. The brain is tolerating stress more. So that's it for tonight, guys. I hope that's helpful. I hope you have a fantastic Monday. Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from our same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take three to ten deep breaths, and we choose love. And if you see these little videos that we post, it's got that little pulsating BP. If you turn your volume up, that's me breathing. Always conditioning yourself to breathe. God bless you, Big Papa loves you. Have a fantastic evening. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay home as much as possible. Keep your distance. Do all the stuff you need to do to be able to keep your family healthy. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night.